In this presentation, we're going to be looking at the threats to world peace that really pushed the world to the edge of World War II. Um, you really want to remember that these years between the war were really years of aggression by some countries and appeasement by others. There's countries like Germany, who we've already talked about, who practiced aggression, and that is where they're building up their nation and looking at what their nation needs and are very willing to take from other countries or to invade and take over other countries in order to gain what their nation needs. And then on the other side of that aggression is the appeasement nations. And these are nations that are actually wanting to avoid another massive war because they very clearly remember what World War I was like and they're willing to kind of allow some leeway for these aggressive nations in order to avoid conflict that would then lead to World War II. So let's look at some specific threats to world peace. And the first one I want to look at is Japan and the Japanese aggression in Asia and the Pacific. So if we remember a few lessons back, Japan was facing the reality of imperialism and they realized they were very smart in realizing that they were either going to become a colony or they could in turn become an empire and so they decide to become an empire and by the 1920s they've really started to gain power in 1930 their prime minister is going to be shot and what this does like in many other nations it opens up this spot for power and military leaders are actually going to take control of Japan at this time. And that is going to allow Japan to make the decision to go out and conquer some pretty big areas. And the first one they look at is to their very big neighbor, China. If you look over here at the map, Japan is in red. That is the island of Japan, islands of Japan. This over here, and it goes out further than what's pictured, is China and pushing up into the Soviet Union. But Japan is going to decide to take on the province of Manchuria. And they're going to succeed in conquering this area. All that does is encourage their aggression because they won and they were successful. So with this big, I guess, encouragement or this like um with this newfound i guess confidence japan is going to remove themselves from the league of nations and then declare their intention to extend it their influence into china and throughout east asia if you want to look over here at the map this is in 1870 we have japan by 1932 they have taken over this entire area that's in pink then they're going to move into the yellow by 1937, this lime green area by 1938. 1939 is this small orange piece. Then we've got these purple areas in 1940, 1942. And while they're moving into these areas, they're actually pushing over into the Pacific Ocean and island hopping controlling more and more islands and this becomes really significant to the United States because by gaining control and conquering more islands they're slowly able to move their navy towards the island of Hawaii and Pearl Harbor and their attack at Pearl Harbor is what's going to pull the United States into World War II. Another country that practiced aggression was Italy when they went in and conquered Ethiopia. Benito Mussolini takes control of Italy in 1922 as a fascist dictator. And he's going to work to improve his, the nation's economy. And he really believed that overseas expansion would help ease economic problems. Looking around, a lot of countries had already been colonized during the huge movement of imperialism. But Ethiopia was one of the only independent states in Africa, and it would become Mussolini's target. Mussolini was smart. He knew not to target a colony of another European nation. He, one, it would have been stripped of quite a bit of their natural resources 
um, and not necessarily making it useful to in, improve his economy. So he's going to move into Ethiopia because it has been an independent state and hopefully will have large amounts of natural resources to exploit. So Ethiopia is actually going to request military aid from the League of Nations and they're unable to offer any type of military help. And because of this, Ethiopia will quickly fall to Italy. And though the League of Nations couldn't offer military help, they did place sanctions on Italy. Interestingly enough, these sanctions were not necessarily enforced because very few countries were willing to go head to head with these aggressive powers, with Italy, because they feared war. So again, we see how appeasement is allowing these aggressive countries to move in and conquer other areas. The civil war in Spain is going to be an interesting conflict because it's almost like a little snippet of what's to come. So the years between the war, world wars are going to be really rocky and violent in Spain. In 1923, rebels will overthrow the government. Um, but then by 1931, this group will have lost control when the army withdraws its support. And then the Second Spanish Republic will be created in 1931. The Second Spanish Republic wanted separation of church and state, educational and social reforms, um, and other reforms that would benefit workers. These new policies would greatly upset traditionalists and would cause the Spanish Civil War. Nationalists who would be led by Francisco Franco would be helped by Soviet and other fascist leaders while France, Great Britain, and the United States would support the republics or the republicans. So please look at that first bullet. We have the Soviet Union and other fascist leaders involved in a conflict in Spain up against France, Great Britain, and the United States. It doesn't necessarily mean that like soldiers and these countries were going to war in Spain. It just means that they aligned themselves um, behind different those two different factions, the nationalists and the republicans in Spain. Essentially, Spain is going to experience a small European war as communism and fascism kind of face off. Franco and the nationalists would win, bringing an end to free elections and most civil rights in Spain. So the, um, to just kind of sum up and end this presentation about the threats to world peace, though none of these are the big push um, into entering World War II, they are definitely heightening the tension and making Western countries or democracies realize that appeasement is not going to work for much longer.